Hi everyone, this keynote video will walk you through our lesson for January 6th and 7th. I think that if you watch it till uh, its completion. Hi everyone, this video will walk you through our lesson for today and tomorrow, January 6th and 7th, as we prepare to write an open-ended essay, question number three, next week once you're physically back in the classroom. So what I want to accomplish today, uh, hopefully, I don't want you to work longer than 60 minutes, so if this ends up taking um, more than that time, I want you to stop at 60. Um, but what I hope that we'll accomplish today is that we will choose the prompt that you're going to write next week. Each of you will have a choice of four. We will brainstorm the evidence that we might possibly use. You won't use all of it. And perhaps even write the introduction to the timed writing for next week. So you're going to pick one of these four. All four of them you looked at before winter break. Um, so they should, they should look familiar, and you might even have some evidence picked out for them already. We did do an assignment prior to Christmas um, that asked you to uh, brainstorm a little bit of evidence. I'm going to ask you to brainstorm more evidence today, but you could use what you've already, what you've already brainstormed. I am going to use the artifice prompt from 2017 as an example of what I want you to do today. So I realize that I am breaking a major rule here by putting so many words on one slide, but um, this is the 2017 prompt, which at this point you've looked at two or three or four times. Um, I'll read the first part of it. The passage below is an excerpt from Empire of Illusion by Chris Hedges. Read the passage carefully, then write an essay in which you develop a position on Hedges' argument that the most essential skill is artifice. Use appropriate evidence to illustrate and develop your position. So um, one of the things I had you do on Monday and Tuesday of this week was tell me how the College Board makes the word artifice, makes its definition apparent, right? Um, and I remember in 2017, the students that year coming back from writing this prompt and coming into my class and freaking out because they did not know what artifice meant. And you know what? I don't think most people know what artifice means. But the thing that I asked you to do on Monday and Tuesday is what I have basically highlighted in red down below. The College Board did not expect anybody to know what artifice means. And that's why they, they used words like mass propaganda, faux intimacy, reality is irrelevant, at odds with the facts, emotional appeal, deception, image-based culture. Do you know what any one of those things is? If you do, then you know what artifice is. And in fact, you could have gotten a perfect score, a nine, on this timed writing and never even used the word artifice. You could have used the word or the words um Reality is irrelevant over and over and over again, and that would have been that would have been just fine. So I guess my point just is is that you are likely going to see a word that you don't know the meaning of, and the college board is not going to hold you accountable for that. You need to not panic. You need to read on and you need to figure out using context clues what that what that word means. So um, the first thing you're doing today is you're picking your prompt, and you can't pick this one, but you can pick one of the other four. And then the second thing that you're going to do is you are going to brainstorm evidence. And I'm going to force you this time, it's the only time I'll do this, I think. Um, I'm going to force you this time to brainstorm evidence that fits every single one of the categories for chores. So I've done that with the 2017 Artifice Prompt. So the C stands for current events, and you can see that I've come up, and you don't have to agree with these. I was kind of just brainstorming and off the top of my head coming up with evidence as quickly as I could, which is exactly what you should do. 
Um, so the C stands for current events. So I have three examples of current events that uh, where artifice is overcoming perhaps the truth, right? Where false reality is overcoming the truth. And I don't know, I think probably my my most powerful one here might be the vaccines or even the global the global warming. The H stands for history. And so again, I've got three examples here of false reality being largely more accepted or more understood or perhaps misunderstood than the actual truth. The O stands for our experiences, and I think most of you know about the Mandela effect. You actually, uh, students taught that to me uh, a long time ago. I had never heard of it, and they brought it in. And the Berenstain Bears is a great example. I've always thought it was Berenstain, but it's not. It's it's Berenstain. And I love that um, I looked up some of these, and I love that it's Jif peanut butter and not Jiffy. And then also the Monopoly man does not have a monocle. And I just, I don't picture him that way at all. And I've played Monopoly a thousand times. My second example here is just a really personal one because I want you to see that that's appropriate evidence for the open-ended essay. The R stands for reading. And of course, since I'm an English teacher, I was able to come up with, I think, some pretty good examples of, of, false reality overcoming the truth in literature. And so there are five examples that I thought all of you would know, especially the Gregor's family and the metamorphosis since we read that together. The E stands for entertainment. And is there a better example of artifice than the Kardashians? I'm not sure that, that there is. And, um, and we can talk about this in class. I think the Kardashians are brilliant. Um, I, I love it when people say things like, well, they're just a bunch of really gorgeous people. Well, there's a lot of gorgeous people in the world, and they're not all as rich and famous as the Kardashians. So I think there's something more going on there than perhaps we give them them credit for. But also I have, you know, reality TV in general, The Blair Witch Project. If you remember that movie, it was a movie that everyone claimed to be real, but it was actually fake. Auto-tune, airbrushed models, and then this idea of false scarcity. This is the idea that um, it's hard to get something and therefore that makes it better, but it might not even be hard to get. It's just... Um, it's a, it's a false scarcity in that they're pretending to be hard to get only because they want to make themselves seem better. I'm making it sound like a person, but it's more like, um, for example, uh, purses, right? Like Gucci purses are maybe not as valuable as they sell for, and it's because of false scarcity that runs their, their value up. And then, of course, the S stands for sports and science and fitting into this false reality artifice idea. The baseball steroid scandal for the sports fans, I'm sure you remember that. Um, a couple years ago, the Houston Astros and the Boston Red Sox won World Series titles in two different years, obviously, and they got caught stealing signs. But then also science, and you know I'm not good at science, so excuse these, but diet fads that don't really work. The fact that Galileo placed the sun at the center of the universe and, of course, or the solar system, and, of course, he was correct, and the Catholic Church condemned him to death and only forgave him, I think, like 50 years ago, maybe not even that long ago. And then also the idea, a lot of people believe this. Um, I know it's hard to believe, but a lot of people do. They think that raisins and fruit snacks are actually healthy, and I think you all know they are absolutely filled with sugar. So you are going to do the same thing for the prompt that you choose. Just one, whatever prompt you end up choosing, you're going to run through chores and come up with evidence for all 
um, for all of the letters in that acronym. Now, you don't need all this evidence. How many examples did I come up with? I think uh, three, six, uh, about 25 or so. You don't need that many. In fact, you might only need one. It's very similar to the rhetorical analysis essay where we might, we might annotate a passage and find 50 different rhetorical appeals, but we only need one of those, two of those, three of those, maybe four of those, and that's it. And that's the same thing here. When you take a position on artifice and whether or not you agree or disagree with Hedge's claim that artifice is the most important um, characteristic in politics and consumer culture, you won't need all of these examples. So if you can get through chores before 60 minutes, then you can also write your introduction. And this is a sample introduction for the 2017 prompt that I wrote. And you can see that it's very short. It's only three sentences long. And honestly, the most important sentence, maybe the only sentence I even need, to be honest, is the last one where I take a position. You can't get around that. You have to take a position because the prompt demands it. So my position is that I disagree with Hedge's assertion because I have more faith in our ability to find truth amidst the dangerous use of artifice. And that's probably the harder position to take. I think that if I were a student, if I, you know, when I was 16 or 17 years old, I don't think that I would have taken that position. I probably would have agreed with Hedges, and that would have been just fine. You can write an excellent essay and get a perfect score, agreeing, disagreeing, or challenging. You can see here that the first two sentences of the introduction simply define Hedges' argument. And that's it. So hopefully today you'll be able to choose a prompt go through chores, and perhaps write an introduction as well, although I'm willing to wrap that around to Friday and Monday if need be. Thanks for listening.